theyeshiva.net. The Suga of Eretz is one of the most painful things. Why? From the Six Day War, the Rebbe almost at every Fabrengen spoke about Eretz Yisrael. When I was growing up in the 70s and 80s, there was almost no Fabrengen that the Rebbe didn't spend a half an hour, an hour, sometimes an hour and a half, to talk about the situation in Eretz Yisrael and the mistakes that are being made. And I used to wonder, there's 5,000 chassidim. They're not military people. They're not government people. They don't even know what he's talking about. It's Hanukkah. Talk about Hanukkah. Put him. You'd be Tammuz, you'd be Tzkislev, Shabbos Vayishlach, Shabbos Chayisara. And it was almost like the Rebbe, like, it, it, was, it burst out. So he spoke for hours about Hanukkah, or Purim, or Tzkislev. But then at some point, he would start talking about Eretz Yisrael. And one of the main points he would make almost every Shabbos was that they're making a terrible, terrible mistake. They don't realize that they are surrounded by people that want every Jew dead. If they had the ability, they would do exactly what the Nazis did. And when you have a snake, you have to cut off the head of the snake. If you don't cut off the head of the snake and you let it be, it's going to come and bite you. It would be like in 1945, the Americans and the British say, you know, we already bombed the German cities enough. Let's leave Hitler with this bunker. We already taught him a lesson. And what would happen today? Everybody would be speaking German. And none of them would be Jewish. Those who would be speaking German. Now, the Rebbe was not hawkish. The Rebbe was not a, he was not a hawkish person. You know what hawkish is? Huh? Everybody knows. They all know what hawkish means. They all know what hawkish means. So some people, their nature, their hawks, they're, they're aggressive, we're going to fight, we don't give in. The Rebbe was punkt farke. There was nobody who spoke so much about world peace and Mashiach and Sheva Mitzvah B'nai Noyach and that ultimately the whole world is going to be peaceful and that's what we're looking for and we're davening for. His whole nature was full of peace and love. But it came to this sugya, he said, you have to understand that any compromise you're making that could possibly endanger one Jewish life is and it's going to haunt us horribly. And I remember when I was a kid and he would speak about it for a long time and he would analyze and explain. And once the Rebbe said, people ask me, what was, was Heston Ishtof? 30 years he started, 30 years, nonstop. And then he said, There were three million Jews then in Eretz Yisrael, not six. Today, six, six point six. Then it was three. He said, "Drei million Yidden in Asakon Echzes. We can echnit shrayin. We can echnit shrayin." And he encouraged the leaders privately and publicly, constantly, every prime minister, every general, whoever he could, that their whole way of thinking needs to change. And that they had opportunities time and time and time again to be able to achieve what Hashem needs them to achieve. But they didn't do it. They didn't listen. They mocked them. Nah. What they would do is, you send in a few, you, you know, say so the Rebbe would compare it to a cancer. There's a raging cancer. The cancer wants to kill you. The doctor goes in, starts the surgery, says there's too much blood. <laughs> and he leaves the cancer inside. He said, don't worry, I got rid of 40% of the cancer. I got rid of 90% of the cancer. You know what the end of the story is? Guy is dead. You don't make peace with cancer that's trying to kill you. You can't. You leave a few cancer cells, boom! Rahman al -Islam. You have to cut out, you have to cut off the, the head of the snake. Et Yisrael did not do this for a few reasons. First of all, they did not read reality. They did not understand the reality. They thought that the other side are like Jews. They want to raise their children in peace. They just want territory. They want comfort. They want to play golf on Sunday, eat sushi on Friday, eat shalant on Shabbos, and have a good life. They did not realize you're dealing with a religious war that wants to see every Jew dead. And for them, that's the biggest Simchas Torah. How many Jews are surprised now by the atrocities? All the Jews... Why are you surprised? What's the surprise? The moment the Fogel family was slaughtered in Itam or Shechte, the whole family Friday night, that's when Israel should have done what they're doing now. Not now. Now, they did it to 1,500 people with the kidnapped and the captivity and all the wounded. They did it to one family, you see, 
Who shechts children? Who shechts children? You heard of somebody shechting children? That's what they did in Tach V'tat. It's a div, it's not territory issue. But Jews didn't understand that. They said, nah, they're like us. You give them Gaza, you give them Oslo, they also want peace. Turek Kartar just paid agents by Iran. That's it. They, Iran pays them off. They pay tuition from Iran. It's, it's fine. It works for them. Don't take them so seriously. They're Iran agents. I don't think they're Jews. I doubt they're really Jewish, Kalocha. I, I doubt they're Jewish. I'll be very surprised that they're Jewish. I can't say for sure. I can't open a chumash and tell you that they're not Jewish, but I'll be surprised. Something is, is off over there. Shloisha Simonim Yashbu Umazu. And uh, it's uh, something is off. It's like somebody marching with Hitler. Uh, it's uh, something is off. It's not. It's not. Something is very off. And then there's also Jews that don't look like Natura Karta, but they speak the same way. And there's something very, very off with them also. Either they're very sick, or they're still traumatized from the Holocaust. They think maybe we deserve it. I don't know. They're very sick. There's some Jews who are very, very sick. Very sick people. Very sick. You have to have compassion for them, but not tolerate their views because they're they're lethal. They're poison. The second reason Israel couldn't do it is because Jews are Rachmanim Bnei Rachmanim and they have Rachmanis. The Medrash says if you have Rachmanis to those who are cruel, you're going to be cruel to those that you have to have Rachmanis on. The third reason is the worst, the worst, the worst tragedy. And that is because of the lack of Torah, Israel did not feel the moral strength and justification that Eretz Yisrael entirely is our home. If you come to shoot my kids in my home, there's no issue. But they started to believe there's two sides. There's another home here. You had a Holocaust, fine, but you can't take away a home. They started to believe that narrative. They couldn't defeat Sahal through the tanks, but they defeated Sahal through morality. The Jewish people stopped believing that it's their home. And that's why Torah is so important. The first Rashi in Bereshus, they stopped teaching. What's the first Rashi in Bereshus? First Rashi. Rashi wrote this in the 10 hundreds. And he was in France during the Crusades. <laughs> there were no 6 million Jews living in Eretz There were a few Jews in Eretz Yisrael. The question was the Muslims or the Christians are going to rule. What does Rashi say? That the whole Sefer Bereshus is extra. Amr Ibi Yitzchak. Torah should have started in Parshas Boy. Torah is a book of mitzvahs. The first mitzvahs in Boy. The few mitzvahs from Bereshis you could put in in Shmois. Mila Gid Hanasha Pruervu. So why is the whole Sefer Bereshis? It's extra. You want to go his? You want to teach me history? Make a Sefer of history. Torah is lessons. It's halacha. So what does it actually say? From Bereshis till Boy. Why was it written? One day, the nations of the world are going to come to the Jewish people and say, you're a bunch of thieves, you're a bunch of thugs, you are conquerors, you are occupiers, you are colonizers, you are an apartheid state. List them at them, you're thugs. And Jews are going to say, well, oh, you're right. <laughs> We're talking thugs. So you know what? We'll go back to the 67 borders. That invention was a Jewish invention. None of the Arabs say that. The whole Israel is an occupation. We decided <laughs> we'll give Gaza and you'll be happy. No. Every point of Eretz Yisrael is ours. Listim atem. The Jews didn't want to accept that because that means you're dealing with a sworn enemy and they wanted to believe that we could play golf, we could be calm. And the Rebbe said, you're dealing with the head of a snake. Say the truth, this is our home. Not a vestige of terror will be tolerated. It will be cut down mercilessly. You don't put one life in danger. Oh. So Rashi says, the whole Sefer Bereshis was written to give Jews an answer. To say, Bereshis, Bada, Lekim, Shemaim, Vezards. God created the world. He took one little tiny piece of land the size of New Jersey and he gave it to the Jewish people. That's it. It's a f match on a football field. But that match belongs to the Jewish people. Instead, they said the UN gave it to us. The UN also says that Zionism is racism. The chairman of the UN says Israel is being disproportionate, disproportionate. So the same UN, then there's a Balfour Declaration. Balfour is dead many years. And British changed, they've made a white paper. This reason, that reason, that reason, all reason, but the core is not there. The Muslims are religious people. They, Allah Akbar, they were screaming, Allah Akbar. 
You have billions of Christians and Muslims who believe in the Bible. The only ones who are afraid to quote the Bible are the Jewish people who gave the world the Bible. That's why Torah is so important. This whole division between those who learn and those who fight is, is such a, it, it undermines the Jewish people. Torah is the, is the, 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 the gibuy ruchani, echamenem gibuy ruchani. The uh, 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 army needs morale, especially a Jewish army. When a Jewish army doesn't have morale, they're killed. The morale of the Jewish people is the Torah. My son Mendel told me a gewaldic word from the Bolchan of Asaman. In Kovitz Shiur and Parshas Vayishlach. The Bolchan of Asaman, Hashem Yen Kemdame, was the Rashiva of Baranovich. He was killed by the Germans, I think July 41, Tammuz Tov Shanalev. So the Bolchanan, the Bolchanan says a moide de kevart. <clears throat> the Gemara says, Al Rebbe brings it in Tanya. Vitir Hakadosh Baruch Hu al Gilu Yadayis Shvichizdam Mavaydezada Veloy Vitir al Bittul Taira. Hashem was ready to forego the time of the Chorban, idolatry, adultery, and murder, spilling of blood, but not Bittul Taira. Frekter Balchanan, come on! <laughs> if your son comes to you and says, Tati. I want to quit yeshiva. I don't want to learn anymore. But you know what? I'm not going to kill anybody. <laughs> I'm not going to do shvichas. I'm not going to do Gilead Ayas. You say, you know what? Those I don't care. Bittel Taira, that's what I care. It's strange. Gilead Ayas, shvichas, mavedezara, that undermines the world. It's, 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 it's heinous. It's evil. That was mavate. Bittel Taira, not. So Balchana says, I'm made the kevart. <laughs> Such a true vart. He sa- gives an example. There were two countries, and they were enemies. They were fighting. Each one has an army and weapons, and one country fights against the other one, and sometimes they win the war. They defeat them. Whatever their mission was, they accomplished. He says, but that's not the end of the story. You know why? Because tomorrow, the other country might attack back. It happened that there were wars. One country was defeated. They had to back off. They had casualties, whatever it is, they had to give up territory. But 10 years later, 100 years later, 50 years later, it happens constantly. The nation attacks. Six-day war, Israel won. And then, here again, Israel made a mistake. They right away said, we're going to give everything back. The Arabs didn't accept it. <laughs> and then they accepted a ceasefire. The Rebbe said, the moment the ceasefire is going to start, start, Egypt is going to prepare for the next war. Everybody laughed. And then came the Yom Kippur War. Lebanon, Begin didn't want to finish in Lebanon because there were four mothers screaming. And the Rebbe said, what, the people you're living in Lebanon is going to create a p'chiel adoidus. Now the Sakana of Lebanon with Hezbollah is ain't l'shai d'ebrit as loisit. But the Rebbe would always say, alpi teva. But since yidna l'may l'mena teva, so the Koyach HaToyra and the Koyach HaMitzvah has incredible power to change reality and that's why the one sheep can live between 70 wolves despite the, the crazy danger. But a Jew has to do things al piteva. You can't just say there'll be miracles. You have to do things al piteva. So the Balchanan says, so one country lost the war. A few years later, the other country attacks. He says, that's all if the country still retains its army and its weapons. But what happens... If the country doesn't only lose the war, the country gives their weapons to the enemy. If the country gives their weapon to the enemy, he says, now the Balchanan says the next war they're not going to win because they're empty-handed. They don't have weapons. Agav, one of the worst mistakes of Israel was they resurrected the PLO, called it the Palestinian Authority. They gave them a police force and that's when the Oslo created suicide bombers from the police that were trained by the Israel themselves. The way that Rebbe was screaming about these things, I can't even tell you. Every Shabbos, an hour, I can still hear it. And he was, Nafsha Yatsa, his whole soul went out. And a moment before, he did a Siyam Ashas. And then a moment after, was a Maimer for an hour. And then there was a Pilpul in Rambam, and a Rashi. But then he would start this Sugya, Nafsha Yatsa Badabra. So the Balchanan says, listen to Balchanan's vart. Gilead means the Jewish people lost the war. The Yitzhahara took over. Gilead Ayas is horrible. Shvichizdamim veretnach. The Rambam says there's no Aveda like Shvichizdamim. It's the worst of the worst. And Avedezara. But he says, but tomorrow the Yitzhahtoiv may take over. <laughs> but he says, when there's Bittel Taira, they're not connected. They're not learning anymore. They don't have their weapons. <laughs> 
They don't understand who they are. They can't even fight back. When you don't believe Eretz Yisrael is yours, when you don't understand who the Jewish people are, when you don't understand who the enemy is, when you don't have an answer to listem atem, we're just a regular nation trying to make peace and we want the world to like us. So now you lost your weapon. You lost your spirit. You lost your energy. That's the Bittal Teda. The Bittal Teda means I don't have a compass anymore. There's no right and wrong anymore. I may do terrible things, but if this Teda, I have a psadedech, there's somebody challenging me, there's something motivating me. So the Balchanan Zvart. Shekayach Mendel. Ich gebe gesagt, gut? Huh? Yeah. And the last thing is, because of this, very, very afraid of what the world is going to say. The Jewish people taught the world morality, but now we're looking to the world to tell us what's moral. They're going to tell us what's moral, what's not moral. Thousands of years ago, most of the nations were still cannibals. They were mention fressers. They stood in forests and they ate human flesh, and the Jewish people then spoke about not to eat Eva Menachai. When Jewish people start gleaning their morality from people who couldn't care less if there's another holocaust, so what do you end up? Every move, before I make the move, I have to know if this one likes me and if this one agrees and if that one agrees. And this is not coming from a hawkish perspective. We want to be aggressive and we, like, we don't love war. We love peace. We want Mashiach. We don't want war. We want peace. But it comes from a healthy perspective of Habala Harga, Hashkem Laharga, understanding. For me, this is very, very painful. Besides, obviously, this is the pain of the reality. I grew up, my whole youth was growing up almost every single Shabbos, hearing the Lubavitcher Rebbe speak about this incessantly with, with a very clear message. Because he, he just saw it, he felt it, he saw it, he saw it with his eyes. Today, you see, it was Mamish Divrei Alekim Chaim every ice. And he was mocked by people, not just by people in Israeli politics, by other people too who just didn't have that clarity, that vision. They just didn't have it. It's very painful to be able to see, to be able to watch that. There was a, somebody in Israel, a, a commander, and he warned about what's going to happen. So today he became a celebrity. His name is uh, Brick. Everybody wants to know because he warned it. He made a warning once that Ebbe for 30 years was warning this. 30 years I, I heard. I didn't hear it for 30 years. I wasn't so old. I wasn't born in 67. But all my years, every Fabre, almost, and not every, but almost every Fabre, from Achen and Shal Pesach to Yutis Kislev, from Purim to Chanukah, from Shabbos Lech Lecha to Shabbos Parshish Nitzavim. I can't say every, but Noch uh, It was Mamish Divrei Nevoa Mamish. Mamish Divrei Nevoa. Word for word for word for word. Like it was said today, like it was said, Erev Simchas And yet I come back to this Nekuda, but with all of this, always remained with such Avas Yisrael to everybody. With such positivity, with such enthusiasm, with such Amunah. How do you do that? At some point you have to become an angry person. You start getting resentful to people. That's the Katointi Mikala Chasadim. This is where you see the emes, you see the pnimius, you see, you see, you see what teres hagul is, you see what godliness is. <laughs> There's never a personal vendetta. It's my ego, which is very normal. Ego is a human thing. I'm upset at you. You got me. I'm gonna get you back. We all understand these things. Loisikaim, loisiter. These are human emotions. Ichel devizen. I'm gonna show you. When you have an ashama that silas, an ashama vein soif, that's so plugged in, kol kuloi is is emes. So there's no color war. There's no um, I'm right and you're wrong, and now I feel better about myself. It's not I feel better about myself. It's I love you as much as I love me. I care. I care. I care. I care. I want goodness. I want innocence. I want purity. I want Hashem. That's what I want. And therefore, also with all the pain of disappointment, there's never despair, no yish. Because the moment you're plugged into the source, there's no yish. Somehow you know that with all the craziness and with all the mistakes that were made, and the p'chiyel adoidas, sada eberstav the welt. You know that, and you know it with the same certainty. 
And that, that's very powerful. It's not just powerful, it's the source of all the power. It's The captain is not, the captain didn't abandon the ship, ever. Like the Baal Shem Tov said, every nekuda is bahashgacha, every nekuda. Every nekuda, even the leaf that turns over is bahashgacha. It's getting its vitality that moment. The yeshiva.net 